Hi there, my name is Blake and welcome to 7D Chess with Multiverse Time Travel. This first video will go over basic board mechanics as well as the menu system. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that you'll notice is this big old menu right here. And to actually interact with it, you have to open up your in-game menu and then point the laser at the buttons. Up here we have main game controls where you can join as either player, reset the board, or update your local network state. Down here we have two piece interfaces, where you, which you can recall with the buttons above, to their original position as long as you are joined as the player that they belong to. Here we have some important information that will be helpful to read, involving uh, victory conditions, uh, actually interacting with the menu and whatnot, as well as up here we have turn controls where you can clear and submit your turn and have a clear indicator of whose global turn it is. So once I want to start playing, we'll click join as either one of those players, and you should see that your name pops up in the field above. And then you'll go over here and grab the piece interface that belongs to you. So now if I wanted to move white's piece, I will click on that piece with the interface, and then I will uh, decide which one of those to move to. So you see the visualizer shows up, and it shows a transparent cube on which piece you have selected. It shows green squares on boards that you can move to, and then it shows red squares specifically for the pawn to show you moves where it could take if it were capturing another piece. Uh, if I select the rook here, you'll see that it doesn't take into account if a piece is blocking it, so that is something you'll have to watch out for yourself. Uh, I can attempt to make that move, but the game will prevent me from doing anything illegal. Additionally, the visualizer will only follow moves for, will only visualize four moves forward. So in cases where you can move more than that, the visualizer will stop and you'll kind of be flying blind. But typically by the time that happens, you have a good enough understanding of the pieces to understand that it is valid. And then the move checking will let you do it anyways. So once I want to actually make a move, I'll click on a piece and click a valid position afterwards, and it will spawn in a new board where that piece has been moved. The tile that the board spawns above indicates whose turn it is to move a piece on that board. Uh, so on this, it is Black's turn to move the board. However, it is still my global turn, so I'm going to go ahead and submit that, and that will allow my opponent to make a move. So then your opponent will be able to move their piece similarly and just submit their turn. Now don't worry too much about this next move, it'll be covered in a future video, uh, but for demonstration purposes I will go ahead and move that knight there, and you'll see that there are now two possible boards for my opponent to play on. So now black can either move a board here, move a board there, or move both boards. However, in order to submit their turn, on any board where it is their turn locally, and they have a green indicator above, they must make a turn. So if I were to move a piece here, uh, I still have that indicator above a black tile, so it would not allow me to submit that turn. If I wanted to change my mind about a turn, I can simply hit clear turn, and it will revert to the last time your opponent submitted their turn. So now, finally, if I make a turn on here, the green indicator pops up above a white tile, which means it is now okay for me to submit my turn and hand control over to white. Multiple boards can be required to be played, so you do have to play all of the, the boards that have the indicator over them that it is your turn. And there are conditions in which the boards may not be required, even if they're further in the past. Uh, but that will be covered in a later video. As a final closing note, there are a couple game mechanics that are absent. Uh, we, the game does not automatically check for checks or checkmates, so that is something that you will have to do yourself. It is tech, Because of the complexity of the game, it's not technically required to call check or checkmate. However, it would be much better sportsmanship to do that if you are capable of it. Uh, it it's, it's pretty easy to overlook something in, in this game, so if you suddenly see something, there is no shame in simply taking the king and declaring your victory. 
The other note is that you only need to capture one of your opponent's king across any timeline, including the past, to emerge victorious. Further details will be elaborated on in future videos, uh, but for now, that is the, basi the basics of the mechanic.